This glass you're looking through is just regular old tempered glass. It's about a half an inch thick. It can and will crack and break, so be careful not to drop anything big on it. And also, if you want to take a picture through it, it works great. Just do yourself a favor and shut off the flash. Otherwise, you're going to get a great picture of yourself. This grass you're looking at down here, that's called eel grass. Manatees love that stuff. That's kind of their staple. They eat about 200 pounds of it a day. And they tell me it's edible by humans as well, but it kind of has the consistency of celery. But it's real bitter. It kind of tastes like kale. This time. As soon as I said kale, that was it for me. All right, we're going to come up on our first spring here in just a moment. This spring is called Spring of the Stars, and it gets its name in honor of all the movie stars that have made movies here over the years. Now, the very first movie was made here in 1916. The movie was called Seven Swans. And to give you an idea how long ago that was, that was a silent movie. That's a long time ago we were there making movies here. Now this spring, the way we're going to pick this out is well, I'm going to come in here and we're going to turn, all of a sudden this, this water, which is about 8 to 9 feet deep, is going to turn into 26 feet. And then you're going to see a flat rock down here, and it, uh, that flat rock is usually surrounded by white limestone. And then above that white, that flat gray rock, is the spring. And it's kind of a crack in the bottom of the river. Here it kind of comes into view here in just a second. You see that underneath the boat now? Again, uh, let, me, let me center myself a little bit better here. I'm kind of off. So bear with me. Bear with me. The wind's kind of playing with me today. six feet of water. It doesn't look that deep, does it? Kind of the rule here with, with this clear water is whatever you think it is, kind of, you might as well double it, because that's usually the people right over. species here that are actually evasive. They don't belong here. Now, anybody know where tilapia might have come from? Asia. Good guess. Good guess. They come from Publix, guys. Come on. <laughs> actually, Asia is true. That's, that's exactly right. They come from Asia, and, but we're not sure how they got here. Nobody really is, but they're evasive. They don't belong here. So far, they haven't done anything about it. They are beginning to do some, some, some damage, though. They're beginning to eat some of the eggs of the other species. That's not good. So we'll see if they do something in the future about that. Now this next spring coming up, guys, is called Creature Springs. It gets its name because Creature from the Black Lagoon was filmed here, all three of those movies. And a guy by the name of Rico Browning, he applied for the part as the creature. He got the part because he can hold his breath for about three to four minutes. That's exactly what the director was looking for. They, they stressed him up in the creature outfit, sent him down to that crevasse right below us. That's 33 feet, where he emerged as on cue as the creature from the Black Lagoon. Has anybody ever seen that movie? You have? It's my favorite. You love it? I kind of do too, but when you compare it to today's movies with CGI and all that stuff, it's way better. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but, it's a classic. 
Now, Rico Browning, the guy who was the creature underwater, went on to do quite a bit of movie work. He wrote and produced the movie Flipper, and he, uh, my favorite thing he did was he, he directed one scene in a movie I know you guys have all seen. It was the pool scene with the baby Ruth bar in Caddy Shack. He directed that. <laughs> he is 91 years old today, still alive. Now this next spring coming up, guys, is the deepest one you're going to see all day. This one is 81 feet straight down. This is called a vertical vent. And they know it's 81 feet because they sent divers down this hole many years ago. And when they came back, they said, you know, it goes deeper. We just can't get there because it starts getting getting too narrow. We'd have to give up our tanks. They weren't too crazy about doing that. This is the hole they went down. In just a second, we're going to pass through here. And this is what we call the abyss. I'm gonna pass over that one more time because wind is playing havoc as we Took, them, took with them a line about a quarter of a mile long. They wanted to see just how far this thing does go. They waited the line, dangled it where they couldn't get. And a quarter of a mile later, never get bought. So, officially, we're calling it 81 feet. That's how deep they got. <laughs> This next spring coming up, we call this Florida Snowstorm. The reason for it is there's a bunch of matter coming out of this one, and it's, it's basically pieces of little limestone coming out of the Florida aquifer. It gives it the illusion of snow, which is the closest thing you're going to see to snow here in Florida. feet deep and basically it's just like I said pieces of limestone and, and little bits of snail shells thrown in coming right out of the floor. direct your attention above the water for just a second. This little island is right in front of us. It's called Bird Island. And if you look up high in the trees up there, you'll see some nesting going on. Those are coonalots and pingos up there. And those, both of those birds are water birds. They love to go underwater and fish. And what they do is they go underwater and they grab a fish with their bill, bring it to the surface, toss it up in the air, and it's wonderful. And they're amazingly good at it. What happened to all the alligators that I used to have? There, there are lots of alligators here. I've just not seen them in the last couple of days. I don't know where they're at. Now, if he saw one here a minute ago, and we're going to go by there. Hopefully, we'll see them. What about the main one right outside before we loaded? What's that? There was a big one right before we loaded the boat. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, an alligator? Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's the first one I've seen all day, to be honest with you. What about the manatees? Manatees are, this time of year, they, they, they don't necessarily hang up here this far. I'm going to talk more about that here in a minute. Okay. But uh, and I'll explain to, as to why. We did see one earlier today, though. here today they're all rated by the geological service and they're rated with a system called magnitude system and that magnitude system is rated from one to eight one being the most water coming out of the spring eight being the least now this spring coming up here is in is in uh, 16 feet of water it's called springs of life and this is a magnitude eight in other words this is going to be the smallest that you're going to see in the way of water flow today. Now how you can pick this particular spring out, pretty soon we're going to run out of grass, and then you're going to see these little white ports on the bottom. And here comes one under view right now. See that little disturbance down there? That's the actual spring. That's water's coming out of there. Just a little bit. Not a great deal, but that's, see these little white splotches along here? That is, there's just little micro holes in there, a little bit of water's going on. Again, the smallest you're going to see all day. That's why it's made in a magnitude. See that long piece of wood down there? That is a dugout canoe, a cypress dugout canoe. Now, the University of Florida got very interested in that dugout canoe and they wanted to take it back to their facility and test it. So they did, and it turns out after they carbon dated it that that dugout canoe is about five to 600 years old. That makes it the oldest ever found. Now, that give you an idea how old that is, that's before the Seminole Indians were even here. It didn't belong to them, it belonged to the Timaqua Indians that were here prior to the Seminoles. Now, the, the uh, University of Florida, when they found this, was just elated. They wanted to put this in a museum. But the state of Florida said, no, you're not. You're going to put that right back where you found it. So they did. That's within an inch of where they found it. spring back there was a magnitude 8. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like to see a magnitude 1. This is on the other end of the scale. The reason this is a magnitude 1 is because this spring produces 250 million gallons of water every single day. That's a lot of water coming out of here. A lot of the captains, this is their favorite because it's pretty and it really does show off why we call this the Silver River because of this beautiful blue look. This is in 29 feet of water, and this is called the Blue Grotto. Why do we get this beautiful blue look in the water? Because of all the water coming out of these springs. 99.8% pure water. It also comes out at a year-round temperature of 72 degrees, year-round. Now manatees, we were talking about manatees earlier, they love this water, especially in the winter time, because manatees cannot survive in water colder than 62 degrees. They will get hypothermia just like you would. 
So in the winter time, they come up river into this 72 degree water to survive. And in the winter time, we see them every day, almost every trip, they're everywhere. But this time of year, they have the whole river to go play in. The whole river is plenty warm for them. And that's why we don't see them as often this time of year. But there's lots of manatees here. We just, I, I know there's one around here because we saw one a few hours ago. But I haven't seen him lately. This cove coming up is called Cypress Cove. The reason it's called that is the cypress tree that's underwater up here and it's been there for well over a hundred years. Now here's the deal with cypress. If we would take this tree out of the water right now, cut it open, it's probably perfectly good wood. That's kind of the nature of cypress tree. And that's why the Native Americans used to use it a lot on canoes and they used to call it the eternal wood or forever wood. Cypress tree. Now there's another object down there you don't mind notice and we're gonna go right over. See that boat down there? Now there's a boat down there we believe was one of the very first glass bottom row boats that used to go up and down this river back in the early 1900s. This stuff is that's hanging off this tree on the right. Spanish moss, correct. Now, many years ago there was a guy by the name of Henry Ford that came down to Florida. And he was building automobiles at the time. And he saw all this Spanish moss everywhere. And he thought to himself, that, you know, I think that would make good stuffing in the seats of my new car. So they did. They actually took a whole bunch back and they started putting it in the seats of the car. There's one little problem that came with doing that that they didn't realize at the time is the Spanish moss has a tendency to harbor mites and chiggers. So imagine what happened to those people that sat down on those beautiful brand new seats and those beautiful new cars on a nice warm summer day. Of course they all got bit. And that little mistake by Henry Ford led to the very first automotive recall in American history. Also, why you hear the term getting the bugs out of your car. Has anybody seen any of our monkeys out here? Anybody heard of them? You heard of our monkeys? Okay. Well, the monkeys we have out here are called Reese the Cat Monkeys. They've been here since about the early 1930s. Um, a guy by the name of Colonel Tuey brought him in. What he, his idea was, he had a kind of a riverboat cruise thing going back in the early days. And his idea was to buy these monkeys, put them on an island, which is a little further downstream from here, and they'd be, they'd be fine. On a, they're not going anywhere. They're on a little island, right? 
and what they do is go by there every day, they feed them, and just guests would see all the monkeys, and it would be kind of a little jungle tour thing. Sounded good on paper. The only problem is Reese the Cat Monkeys are really good swingers. So they didn't stick around on that island, but just about a day. That was it, they were gone. And they, they, they've had run with this entire forest ever since. Now they're definitely reproducing because we're up to about a thousand of them now, somewhere in that neighborhood. And I see them about once a week. And the only reason we don't see them really any all more often than that is because they have such vast grounds that they can roam in if they want to. So we don't see them that often. But if you do happen to be out walking, over, especially over in this area on the, on the left, and you happen to see one, just you know, watch them. Don't get too close when you take your pictures and stuff because they do have a tendency to uh, throw things at you. And guess what those things are that they throw at you? Yeah, they're throwing poop at you. So it's not something you want to be on the receiving end of. But I'm not saying they do that every time. Um, usually they, sometimes we'll see them hanging out right here on this fence. And they're pretty cool with guys. They're about three and a half feet tall. Uh, and they're kind of neat to watch. Do they have any predators? Excuse me? Of course they do, like alligators, yeah, absolutely. But they're pretty smart guys too. They, they, they know kind of what we do, stay away from them. This little palm tree out to the right, that's called a lucky horseshoe palm. It's an alligator right over there. There is where? Right by the stone there. Oh, yeah. Let's go through around and take a look. I, that's where they told me it was, but I didn't see it. This is called Mammoth Springs. And this, this spring is called that for a couple reasons. One, they found woolly mammoth bones at the bottom of this thing many years ago. And two, the sheer size of this spring. This spring is 65 feet wide. It's five feet tall at the opening. It sits in 55 feet of water. And this spring, all by itself, puts out 550 million gallons of water every single day. That makes up for two-thirds of all the water going down this river coming right out of here. This is the largest artesian limestone spring in the world. Especially on the left, can you see way up into that cavern there? I'm going to whirl around so you guys on the right can get as good a view here in a second. Now all this water is coming straight out of the Florida aquifer. And if you're not real sure what that is, 
think of it as a giant underground river system. And it runs throughout Florida, Georgia, and even parts of Alabama. So what happens when it rains in these areas, the rainwater goes down through the soil, down through the limestone, and ends up in this giant aquifer, all throughout the state. And then it stays in there until it finds its way out through a spring similar to this one. Now here's the, here's the, the caveat that will really get you. That time it takes from the day it starts raining till the day that water actually comes out here, 20 years ago. In other words, you're looking at rainwater 20 years ago, right now. That gives you an idea of just how vast this system is. It's huge. basically where all the water is coming out of that cave is 65 feet across. Did they put the tilapia in here? Did they put the tilapia in this river? No, the tilapia are invasive. They don't tell me how they got here. We don't, we're not real sure. But uh, uh, they certainly didn't put them here. In fact, I think at some point they're going to have to try to get them because they are starting to eat the eggs of some of the other fish. Okay, now guys, back in the mid-60s, there was a television program called I Spy on television, and they filmed one episode right here at Silver Springs. And what the premise of the thing was, was kind of set in the Greek Isles, and the script called for some statues to be built underwater. So what they did was they built these statues in 30 feet of water, these statues stand about seven to eight feet tall, and they represent three Greek gods, and that's Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades. Now these statues are also made out of fiberglass, keeping in mind they're not made out of stone because these are nothing but moody props. Can you see them yet? I'm gonna take another pass out of here so you can see them a little better. These same statues were also picked up a few years later after they did this one episode by two James Bond movies, and that was Never Say Never Again and Moonraker. Use these same statues. Now originally there were seven of these things down there, and when it came time to them finish filming, the producer said, okay, let's pick up our props, let's go home. The local Calvin people had a fit. They said, don't take those up. That's cool stuff. People want to see it. That's uh, part of our movie-making heritage here at Silver Springs. But they managed to already grab four of the seven, but they, there were these three left. They said, okay, fine. We'll leave those three for you. Those things have been down there since 1967. And I'm glad they left them because I get more questions about those silly things than anything. You'd be surprised. Everybody get to see him okay? Yep. And being that said, that's going to conclude our tour for this afternoon. And I want to thank you all for coming out. I appreciate that. And I hope you guys had a little fun. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to swing this boat around and put this thing right back where we found it. And hopefully going to put it back just as gently as we came out. But for some reason, if I hit that dock a little harder than I intend to, do me a favor and stay seated until we completely tie up. Everybody's cool with that. This glass you've been looking through, we have a we have a special name for that. We call that the world's largest tip jar. Anybody would like to leave a gratuity, 
It's been our tradition to just throw it right down there on the glass. And of course you're not obligated to do so. But if you do, it's greatly appreciated.